Well, hi everyone. Welcome to today's Protocol Labs Research Seminar. Today we're joined by Krisa Stathakopoulo, who recently joined the team at Chainlink Labs as a researcher, where she's helping smart contracts reach their full potential. Krisa was a doctoral student at IBM Research and ETH Zurich, and also earned her master's at ETH Zurich. Today, she will be talking about state machine replication scalability made simple. So thank you so much, Krisa, for taking the time to join us today, and I'll let you take it from here. Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for having me here today. So today I will talk to you about um, a paper that was uh, recently published in Eurosys. And it is a work that uh, we did uh, with uh, people that you probably know, Matei and Marco, uh, while we were all together working in IBM research. And the title says State Machine Replication Scalability Made Simple. So uh, the talk today will first cover briefly the problem we try to solve, state machine replication. And then I will try to justify the title of the presentation. Namely, I will try to explain why scalability is not simple. Then I will present our solution, which we call uh, ISS. Uh, it stands for Insanely uh, Scalable State Machine Replication. And it is a protocol that uh, multiplexes um, single leader protocols that solve total order broadcast into a scalable uh, solution that solves again total order broadcast. Um, and while uh, uh, such uh, multi-leader total order broadcast protocols uh, may already exist, um, we want to emphasize that our solution is both efficient and modular. Uh, to, to give a spoiler, uh, the results uh, we achieved with this protocol is that when we uh, implemented it with known protocols such as PBFT, Hot Stuff, and Raft, we managed to uh, uh, make them scale on uh, 128 nodes with a performance of more than 50,000 requests per second on a wide area network with one gigabps connections. And uh, I would also like to highlight that uh, I will not talk today about a sharding protocol. Um, so this performance uh, is while maintaining a common total order um, among uh, all instances. But before jumping into many details, let's take, take a step back and uh, see the problem we try to solve in more detail. So the problem we try to solve, as it's clear by now, it's a state machine replication, but it all starts with a simple state machine. Uh, let's say that we have uh, a client that wants to submit uh, a request to some remote service, and such request uh, has uh, uh, a payload and some identifier. The payload is the operation that will be executed by uh, the service to go from an initial state to some new state. And once this is done, the service will respond to the client uh, notifying them that uh, the operation was done by assigning a sequence number to the response. This is a very simple solution. However, it has uh, an important drawback. It has a single, single point of failure. So what people uh, went on and did was to make um, a replicated state machine where we don't have only one server, but we have multiple servers. And uh, um, as before, the client uh, is supposed to send out requests and receive responses. However, um, we want to make sure that we tolerate situations where one or more of those servers not only crash, but they uh, might uh, perform arbitrarily in any way. Um, and this is what we refer to as Byzantine fault tolerance. And what we actually want to achieve is to make this uh, replicated service act as one server um, so that this is seamless with uh, respect to the client and the client receives the same response whether it was sent to one server or multiple. Uh, so uh, this uh, is built with a set of properties, the agreement property that makes sure that uh, all servers 
um, assign the same sequence number to uh, a request, the integrity property that uh, makes sure that when a sequence number is assigned to some request, this request was indeed sent by the client, the liveness property, which makes sure that the client will for sure get back a response with the sequence number, and the totality property that makes sure that the client will get the same response from all the remote servers eventually. Uh, if they are correct. And these properties uh, um, describe a problem that is known in research as total order broadcast, uh, where uh, the uh, terminology that we use is that the client broadcasts a request to the server, to the service, and the service delivers a request to the sequence number to the client. Um, when uh, the nodes now uh, build uh, a log, of such requests uh, from potentially um, main cl many clients uh, with many sequence numbers assigned uh, to all the requests, we see that we can create um, a, an ordered log of these requests based on the sequence number. And this construction now might uh, seem very familiar because basically it describes um, a blockchain. And because uh, of the applicability uh, to blockchain systems, it is particularly interesting to uh, solve a state mass total order broadcast um, under uh, specific uh, assignments, namely partial synchrony, uh, which describes the network communication. This means that we usually assume that the network is asynchronous uh, so that the messages uh, might be delayed arbitrarily. Um, but from time to time, we assume that the latencies are predictable or the network is synchronous. And uh, it is interesting to solve such a problem in a wide area network. State machine replication is not a new problem to solve. Um, it has been around for many decades. However, its applicability to blockchain systems has um, posed new requirements. As we said, we want to solve uh, such problems uh, in wide area networks with many nodes um, where uh, we require a high throughput, low latency, uh, even when we operate uh, with faults and even when we operate with Byzantine faults. Uh, so, uh, the, the, pro the protocols that have been uh, suggested so far uh, in research, in the beginning, they had all a common denominator. Uh, they are uh, single leader total order broadcast protocols. And the problem with single leader uh, total order broadcast protocols is that they have um, a very important bottleneck. Now, to explore this bottleneck, imagine that we have uh, some clients here submitting requests to some nodes that solve the problem. And we will assume that the requests are grouped in some batch. So node zero here is the uh, leader of the protocol. And what this node has to do is to disseminate these batch to all nodes. Um, we call this phase usually proposal or pre-prepare phase in such protocols. And then the protocol may proceed in um, multiple rounds, uh, depends on its actual um, implementation. But the problem is uh, already in the first phase because this uh, batch that the leader has to disseminate is very um, uh, uh, big. Uh, and what is uh, worse is that the more nodes we have in the system, uh, the more data the leader needs to push through the network. And since uh, the leader has a limited uh, bandwidth available, uh, this soon becomes a bottleneck which uh, makes the uh, throughput uh, fall uh, uh, very steeply. And what actually we observe is that the throughput drops inversely proportional to the number of the nodes. Now, to resolve this uh, single leader bo bottleneck, uh, researchers suggested uh, parallel uh, total order broadcast protocols. This means that we have more nodes acting as leaders, um, where uh, more nodes try to send uh, requests through the network at the same time. However, uh, still this solution uh, has a, an important drawback, and this is duplicate requests. Uh, let's exam examine an example to see uh, what this suggests. 
Uh, so as before, we have a client that wants to broadcast some request, and uh, for uh, liveness purposes, this client uh, cannot depend on sending this request just to one node uh, um, who will act for it as a leader because this node might crash or it might even be Byzantine and censor such request. So if both node uh, zero and node uh, one act in parallel as leaders, what will happen is that they might uh, put both the request R0 in their respective batches and therefore they will both waste resources trying to push this request through the network. And this, uh, when the client would send the request to multiple nodes, will have uh, an effect on the throughput similar to the effect that uh, single leader uh, protocols had, namely um, we will again have a throughput which is inversely proportional to the number of the nodes. And what is uh, important to observe in this situation is that uh, we cannot know whether the client sent the request to multiple leaders because there was a liveness issue or whether the client uh, needed to do so uh, because it was uh, slow and he did not receive um, a response fast, for example, from node zero, or whether the client is also malicious and wants to exploit this vulnerability of multi-leader uh, protocols and uh, deteriorate the throughput of the protocol. So to address this uh, solution, again, uh, researchers uh, came through and uh, proposed uh, uh, um, uh, protocols uh, such as MIR-BFT and FNF. MIR-BFT is a previous uh, work that, again, is done with uh, Marco and Matei to address this problem. And uh, to address uh, the duplication issue, um, what is done in MIR-BFT is a careful partition of requests among the path leaders, such that each leader only sends out one request at a time. Uh, and then we uh, reallocate uh, this assignment uh, periodically to still maintain liveness. And while this solution indeed demonstrates that it has a much better scalability than before applying the duplication mechanism, it has still some issues. Um, in particular, such solutions, um, they, uh, parallelize, they are uh, designed uh, uh, to parallelize uh, specific protocols. Uh, MIR BFT is designed to parallelize uh, PBFT, and FNF is an effort to parallelize a protocol which is uh, similar to hot stuff. And moreover, uh, they highly depend on a single node, which is known as the epoch primary in the protocols, that move the protocol from configuration to configuration when something goes wrong. And this epoch primary can uh, severely uh, impact the performance of the protocol uh, when it is malicious. So our solution uh, that we wanted to achieve with our new protocol, uh, ISS, uh, was a parallel leader protocol to tackle performance. Uh, with duplication prevention uh, to maintain good performance in, in scale. But we also wanted it to be uh, simple um, and modular. And our uh, simple design, um, uh, our target was to be able to multiplex not only a specific uh, PBFT protocol, but uh, a specific protocol such as PBFT, but any uh, leader-based total order broadcast or consensus protocol. And uh, we wanted also to do that without uh, depending on uh, an epoch primary to avoid uh, difficult situations when this primary crash or is Byzantine. Here's in a nutshell how ISS works. Uh, what we want to do basically is simple. We want to uh, create a total, uh, a totally ordered uh, log of requests. And uh, the log is represented with sequence numbers. And uh, 
when the client broadcasts requests, uh, some leader known assigns uh, this sequence, a sequence number to this request. Um, we say that the request is committed uh, uh, and added to the log when, um, uh, excuse me, we say that the request is added to the log when it is committed by the underlying protocol instance. And once uh, all uh, positions prior to uh, the sequence number of the particular requests are filled, we can uh, deliver uh, the request and at this point the request can be executed because we know uh, all the requests that uh, are executed previously in the ordered log. Uh, so simple as that. We want to fill a log with requests in a totally ordered way. Uh, and what we do in order to handle this with a multi-leader protocol is to partition the log to what we call segments. So segments here are shown uh, with the uh, rectangles that uh, go around uh, uh, different um, uh, sequence, sequence numbers of the log uh, because what we present with a segment is basically just uh, a set of sequence numbers. Uh, so each segment now is assigned to a particular node uh, that acts as a leader for this segment. Uh, and at the same time, this node as act, acts as a follower for all other segments. And for each segment, we run uh, an instance of uh, what we call sequence broadcast. And sequence broadcast is a novel primitive that we uh, came up to for the purpose of this work. It is similar to total order broadcast, yet uh, it terminates for a set of sequence numbers. So it terminates for the sequence numbers in the segment. And importantly, it is implementable with consensus or total order broadcast so that we can reuse uh, already known protocols from the literature to um, uh, uh, put them together with ISS and uh, have a high uh, throughput solution. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, an issue that is important for uh, multi-leader protocols is request duplication. So to avoid this, uh, we uh, adjusted the deduplication um, mechanism that uh, we designed for mere BFT, uh, such that we map uh, to each segment of the log uh, a different uh, subspace of uh, 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 the space of some hash function uh, that we refer to as bucket. And now each bucket uh, is assigned uh, to a segment and each node that acts as leader for this particular segment is uh, the only node that can propose requests that when hashed map to this bucket. So, for example, here, when a node sends to multiple nodes, when a client sends to multiple nodes, request R0, uh, such that R0 uh, is hashed uh, to the blue uh, part of the request hash space and therefore falls into the blue bucket, regardless um, which node received this request, only the request who is currently responsible for the uh, blue bucket here node zero is able to put this request in uh, a batch and instantiate the uh, and use this batch uh, through sequence broadcast to totally order it now we are not done because this protocol is uh, efficient but it is not live and this is because things can go wrong uh, and uh, uh, the nodes uh, that are responsible for some segment uh, can crash or be Byzantine and uh, sensor requests. So we don't want to uh, rely on a single node for um, uh, handling the requests that fall to a particular bucket. And therefore, uh, we, set, we um, further uh, uh, partition the log into epochs such that we can reassign uh, uh, buckets uh, to nodes uh, for different epochs. So, for example, here, after uh, sequence number 11, uh, we start a new epoch, and now the, uh, which is partitioned again in segments, but now not node 0, but node 1 is responsible for the blue bucket. So if node 0 had crashed or would censor the request, node 1 will be able to propose the request from the blue bucket. 
Uh, now let's examine a bit more how we handle uh, faults in ISS. So imagine again our example where node zero crashed. Uh, and at this point, uh, node zero has only managed to assign a request to uh, sequence number zero. What will happen is that we will uh, assign uh, uh, some other node temporarily as uh, leader of uh, the, seg the blue segment here to make sure that um, this segment terminates. So to make sure that some value is assigned to all sequence numbers of this segment. And in particular, we enforce a rule that says that the new leader can assign only uh, some special uh, bottom value to the sequence numbers of the crashed segment. And the reason we did that was to allow this segment to finish as soon as possible and uh, not delay further the progress of other segments that might have already um, finished so that we can pass to the next epoch as soon as possible. And in the next epoch, since we realized that node zero uh, was not able to um, uh, finish uh, the segment, uh, we can exclude node zero from the leader set and uh, assign uh, all the segments among uh, the other um, uh, three nodes. Uh, so, for example, in the next epoch, node one will act as leader for both uh, the yellow and the blue segment. And while this in this picture might seem a little bit imbalanced, uh, keep in mind that in practice, uh, we had um, many more segments that nodes, uh, so that um, uh, we can better load, load balance the segments of the crashed node once it's gone. Uh, now, let me uh, demonstrate uh, a bit more in detail how we use ISS to multiplex uh, our SP instances. So, ISS as a black box uh, seems very simple. It has a simple interface, as we said, client broadcasts requests and uh, ISS delivers requests with sequence numbers. And what ISS keeps inside is a, an ordered lock of uh, actually batches. Um, because uh, and we decided to use badges to amortize um, computation and communication complexity. Uh, so when a request is received, it maps to uh, some bucket, and each epoch we spawn multiple SP instances. And the SP instances inside are implemented with one uh, uh, leader-based protocol, uh, such as PBFT, hot stuff, or AFT. Those were the protocols that we actually implemented uh, to evaluate the protocol. Uh, but it could be, uh, in, uh, in principle, any leader-based uh, protocol. Uh, so once um, a request batch can be formed, which depends on some timeout or on some maximum batch size for the uh, batch. We can invoke a uh, broadcast for the sequence broadcast uh, primitive, uh, which happens for uh, multiple um, SP instances in parallel. And once uh, the batch is delivered by the sequence broadcast, we can put this uh, batch into the log. And as we mentioned previously, once uh, all the positions are filled uh, the, um, uh, before some sequence number, the batch can be delivered. And at this point, all the requests in this batch are delivered. Uh, and the total order of the requests is specified by the total number of requests delivered up to this point, which we know because uh, we have delivered some batch for all the sequence numbers up to this point, uh, and also the relative position of the request in the batch. So uh, we evaluated um, our uh, ISS protocol uh, with a, a Go implementation. We implemented, as I mentioned, uh, PBFT, the changed version of hot stuff and draft as the underlying uh, sequence broadcast. And we evaluated uh, ISS on a wide area network that spanned over um, 
16 data centers all over the world, uh, where we had uh, uniformly uh, distribute up to 128 servers. Uh, each node uh, had, uh, was a fairly powerful node uh, with 32 cores, 32 gigabyte memory and one gigabps. However, one gigabps is not uh, an insane um, uh, 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 bandwidth um, and uh, we had also uh, a varying number of uh, client machines um, varying from 1 to 16 based on the load we wanted to uh, send to the servers. Uh, we evaluated the protocol with uh, 500 bytes per request because this uh, request uh, this uh, request size um, is similar to um, a Bitcoin uh, transaction. And uh, the operation that uh, the main operation that was done uh, by each uh, server upon receiving a request was a signature verification for client access control. And as I mentioned, request were, requests were ordered in batches, but the um, batch size uh, differs. Um, according to the best configuration for each of the underlying implementations. And uh, it also um, differs uh, to better uh, allow um, the protocol scale according to the numbers to the number of nodes in the network. So in this figure, I, um, I will discuss uh, how ISS better makes uh, the underlying single leader protocols to uh, scale. Uh, we present here uh, in the X axis the number of nodes and in the Y axis uh, the throughput in thousand uh, requests per second. And the data points on this uh, plot are the uh, uh, saturation throughput. So basically, um, for each of the um, uh, configuration uh, in numbers of nodes, um, clients progressively send more requests uh, per second uh, to the nodes until um, we observe that the uh, throughput does not increase anymore and the latency increases uh, rapidly. Uh, so at this point, we did use uh, that the protocol is saturated and the highest throughput is the throughput rep reported on this plot. This line is the evaluation of PBFT without ISS, and it indeed uh, behaves uh, as we expected uh, inversely, where the throughput drops inversely proportionally to the number of the nodes. Uh, whereas uh, the uh, ISS uh, PBFT implementation uh, reports uh, significantly higher throughput. Uh, and uh, we see a similar situation for hot stuff. Um, also, hot stuff um, uh, does not perform uh, performs worse even than PPFT for a small number of nodes. Uh, this is particularly related to the um, uh, to the. To the, to the way that hot stuff uh, chains uh, proposals and makes it a latency bound protocol. Uh, and uh, as soon as we add more nodes as leaders and we have uh, more uh, hot stuff instances running at the same time, we can see that uh, hot stuff performance um, uh, improves uh, significantly. Uh, finally, uh, Raft uh, also uh, has uh, a uh, a performance that fastly deteriorated, deteriorates uh, with the increasing number of nodes uh, when it is a single leader implementation. Um, it is important to point out for Raft that uh, it uh, it is a protocol that in wide area network we observed that it does not behave very well uh, because um, it again is very sensitive to latency but in a different way. Um, uh, Raft has a um, a heartbeat mechanism basically and when uh, the leader does not uh, see uh, a response from uh, a follower it resents to this follower uh, the proposal so if the latencies in the network are a bit unpredictable um, a raft will send the proposals uh, to the followers again and again and uh, to avoid this uh, we would we tried to impose uh, higher uh, timeouts um, between different proposals. 
uh, but still the sync leader implementation would not uh, scale very well because of the sync leader bottleneck. Uh, still the uh, multi-leader implementation, uh, we see that uh, performs quite well. Um, now to examine also the latency of the uh, ISS uh, counterparts, oops, here I'm missing the legends, uh, I'm sorry. Um, the, the blue line here represents PBFT uh, on 128 nodes. On the x-axis we see the throughput uh, as the rate from the clients increases and on the y-axis we see the latency. So before the saturation point, we observe that PBFT has few seconds latency. Uh, similarly, uh, Raft, uh, which is the um, orange line, has few seconds latency and uh, hot stuff as well. Um, we can observe here that uh, hot stuff has a uh, uh, significantly higher latency um, and uh, this as i discussed earlier is related to the fact that um, hot stuff is a latency um, bound protocol uh, which affects it significantly in wide area networks. However, uh, in any case, um, we achieve thousands of requests per second with ISS with uh, below 10 seconds latency um, uh, under uh, an average load. Uh, then um, I would like to discuss a little bit uh, how uh, ISS uh, behaves uh, when we have um, crash faults. And let me uh, explain a little bit these um, pictures. So here uh, we see uh, um, uh, an average throughput uh, for short periods of time as the time uh, uh, goes on uh, on the uh, y-axis and on the x-axis we see time. Um, the uh, periods uh, between dashed lines uh, represent an epoch of the protocol. And um, we see uh, on the red arrow uh, how uh, throughput drops um, when we have a leader crash. Uh, also, this is um, an evaluation of uh, ISSP BFT with crash faults. So at about, uh, for the um, left uh, picture, uh, we see what happens uh, when uh, we have uh, the leader of one SP instance crashing at the end of an epoch. And on the right side, we see the opposite edge case, which is what happens when a node crashes at the beginning of an epoch. Now, what we observe is that um, the crash at the end of the epoch on the left-hand side is a worst case scenario, because when this happens, um, we have to wait to resolve this leader crash before um, moving to the next epoch, uh, at which point we have a, a very high peak in throughput uh, because we order uh, the requests for which the crash leader was responsible for, and then we move on to the next epochs. And because if, we, if you recall, we have uh, blacklisted the leader that crashed in all the subsequent epochs um, we do not uh, observe any further throughput deterioration because of the crashed leader. Uh, on the right hand side, however, uh, we observe a more um, a friendly scenario where the leader crashed uh, towards the beginning of the epoch. And we can observe that in this case, we do not have a drop in throughput significantly because um, while uh, we do not basically have an idle period uh, for throughput, because while we were trying to resolve the leader change for the PB BFT instance that the leader crashed, the other instances progressed normally. Uh, so at the end of the epoch, we do not have to wait anymore and we can move already to the next epoch. Uh, whereas explained previously, we have removed the crash leader from the leader set and we don't encounter any um, uh, leader changes anymore. Uh, so this concludes the description of the protocol uh, on my behalf. Uh, you can find online our uh, paper um, for more details and the uh, source code which we used for uh, the evaluation. And you might be already familiar with the name ISS because some version of it uh, is uh, developed by uh, protocol labs. 
Uh, so that is for now. All right. Well, thank you so much, Chrisa.